In the last lecture, we added in our spider AI. So to cap it off, we're gonna add in a new AI type, which is going to be flying AI for our bat. Let's double click and make a new sprite. In our bank layout, let's right click import frames from files, and let's grab flap one through four for our bat flying animation. Let's delete frame zero, and let's add in a new animation. We can call this one perch, and we can call our default one flap. And for our perch, let's just right click import frame from file and let's grab our perch frame, just like that, cool. So now we have our bat, let's call this object bat. Let's actually bring this into our family so it inherits. And let's edit our family, bring our bat on in. We're actually going to give our bat its own instance variables. We're gonna call this instance state. And I'm trying to think if we need anything else. We already have a distance variable, so I think we are good to go there. Now, we actually don't need any behaviors at all. So we can disable the platform behavior. We can disable everything else. Uh, it's actually pretty cool that we get this. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I had added in the ints distance from our enemies, so it makes sense. Otherwise, if you are not using families, you can just add the ints state and in the inst, uh, distance instance variables to your, your bat and we should be good to go here. So let's make a new event sheet here, call it bat AI. And let's make sure that we bring this into our game event here before I forget. And let's create that object at, let's go 250 on layer enemies, just like this. Okay, cool, so let's go back to our bat AI. Now, I want to explain something. Now, in one of my courses, in my action platformer course from a very long time ago, I had a student who sent in a project who was a very good student. I'm not sure if he's enrolled in this course, but very good student and was very happy to see one of the very first projects made from the course and to see how they took it to the next level. They actually added in uh, AI that wasn't there. And this is what it's based off of. I'm basing my bat AI off of their bat AI from the action platformer course that I taught a bunch of months ago. So I hope they see this. If not, it's okay. I've kind of tweaked their code a little bit. So it's a lot more, it's a lot less intensive. We're not using any behaviors, which is what I was kind of talking about before with the spider behavior using the line of sight. We can actually utilize the distance function to actually calculate where our bat is in relation to our player without needing any line of sight at all. If you wanted to use the line of sight object for your bat, you can totally do so. But this is actually a shorter uh, amount of code to write. So what we're going to do, is like we've been doing, we're gonna to go to our bat, we're gonna type in created. And on created, we are going to set the value of our state to two. Now this is something that I really, really liked about this project from this student because he created a state engine that was very clearly defined. We've been creating state engines all along with our animation engine and whatnot. And we're definitely gonna be doing something similar when we create our bullet engine, but it's very clear that you have state zero, state one, and state two, and they all do their set things, which is really, really cool. Then what we wanna do is we wanna add a system for each, for each bat. And in this case, this is where we're going to set our distance function. So let's go to our bat. Let's set the value of its distance, which is from our enemy's family. We wanna set it to the distance function and if I just hit one parenthesis here, you can see that it takes in four parameters, x1, y1, x2, and y2. So the first two objects, x and y position, and then the second object, sorry, the first object's x and y position, and the second object's x and y position. In this case, we're gonna grab the bat's x position and y position, and the player's x position and y position. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract 15 from the Y position because this is a bat that is going to fly up and stick to our tile map. So we wanna just make sure that we're getting the distance always 15 pixels away on the Y axis from our player, which is really cool. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna to go to our bat, we're gonna compare the instance variables for our state, and we're gonna do it like this, copy and paste it twice if it's one, 
and if it's two. So zero is gonna be our normal state. This is gonna be the state that we wanna put it into. There's no animation being played here. This is kind of like our trigger state. So we can actually hit Q and we can call this our trigger state. We can go to state one, which is actually going to be our attack state. And then we can go to state two, which is going to be our perch state, just like this. And I realized I did not capitalize that. So there we go. These are our states. So for ins state equals zero, let's hit B. Let's make a sub event. And we're gonna compare the distance that we just made. We're gonna compare it and we're gonna say less than or equal to 100. Now I'm gonna put it to 100 for now because this is actually very, uh, very, it's a good example. And actually what we could even do is we can make it a global va uh, variable. Uh, but I think I might wanna do something different with our globals, I'm not sure yet. Or did I already do it and I'm not paying attention enough? I didn't do it yet. I wanted to make a global event sheet and that's just another preference thing. You don't have to do that, but if you have a global event sheet, it might be easier to organize. We don't need to make a global event, uh, global value, global variable at all, but if you did want to, that could be the same thing. Anyway, what we're going to do here, if the state equals zero and the direction, which we, or the, uh, I said direction, distance, the distance which we just calculated between the bat and the player minus 15 for the player's y, if that's less than or equal to 100, then we're gonna set the state to attack, which means it's close enough to attack. So let's set the value of the state to one. Now in our attack, what we wanna do is this. We wanna make sure that we're setting our animation to flap. And because since it's a state engine, we're gonna be resetting the animation. So let's actually do that now. Let's copy and paste this for perch and we're gonna set it over here. That's why we're doing it this way. Of course, you can make your own animation uh, state engine as well, like we've been doing. Same principles apply, put it in the every tick, same thing. So what we're going to do here though, that's a little bit different, is we're going to add a sub event into our state here. We're gonna copy over this exactly. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to move it a pixel at a specific angle. And this is really ingenious and I really like it. We're gonna move it forward uh, one, how are we gonna do this? No, we need to move it at an angle, not move forward. Move at angle. We're gonna move it one pixel at the angle while using the angle function. So just like we did with the distance function, you get object one, X and Y angle, object two, X and Y angle. So we're gonna grab the bats, X and Y angle, and then we're gonna grab the player, X and Y angle, which is really cool. And of course, we're gonna subtract 15, just like that. So we're gonna move one pixel uh, at that angle. Then if this is not true, we're gonna hit X to make an else statement, and we're gonna set our state to two, which now means that we are perched. So if we're perched, what we're going to do is we're gonna make a sub event here and we're gonna to check to see if the bat collides with anything. So in this case, if it collides with the game map, like so, if it collides with our tile map and our bat's Y position, so let's actually compare the Y position is less than, or no, you know what? I did this backwards. Not the, the bat's Y position, let's hit C again the map's Y position. So let's compare the tile map's Y position like this. And if it is less than the bat Y position. So if it's less than the Y position of the bat, then what we're going to do is have the bat set its position to self.x and self.y. And this is gonna make it perch. Then what we're gonna do, since this does nothing, we're gonna actually set our states. Let me copy this down here back to zero. Now, one thing that I added in that I think is pretty important is a way for the bat to look at you when you're actually moving left and right. So we're gonna add that in as well. We're gonna say if our bat, we're gonna type in compare X is less than our object player dot X, then we are going to set the bat to mirror. And just like that, if it's not, else we're gonna set it to not mirrored. And now the bat will actually follow us when we play our animation. Final thing to note, let's just go back to our bank here. Let's double click on our animation here. Let's set our flap speed to 20. And uh, I guess we can put it to loop. Let's actually turn that off for now. We don't need that. And our perch obviously has a speed of zero, just like that. So let's hit save 
and let's go back to our game and let's hit play. Now we're going to have a lot of enemies all appear at once. So let's see what happens here. So we have our spider. Maybe I didn't create it in the right place. Let's see. I don't see the bat. Did I include the event sheet? That's always the go-to. Let's put this at 200. Let's disable both of these. Um, if I'm forgetting anything off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. Let's hit play. And let's see how this goes. That's playing the bank. So we don't want that. Let's go to our game. Let's hit play. And let's see if it will now spawn the bat after seven seconds, four seconds. Which one was it? If it's not spawning the bat, which it should, so therefore something is something is wrong. Let's think what is wrong. Our code is correct. It's in our game event then. It's creating it correctly, the same place there. We have this included. Huh. This one, unless there's something wrong with the order. Give me one second and I will be right back. Okay, I am back and I'm telling you those origin points will get you. They get me all the time. So what was wrong was my origin point somehow got a little off centered and I couldn't find the object. So make sure that you have your origin points in the middle and apply it to all animations. Uh, the other thing that I forgot because I forgot one other thing was I forgot to include something for our state two when we are perched. When we're perched, we are only doing half the work here. We actually need to move it so it collides with our tile map. And to do that, we're gonna move it at an angle. So let's go to our bat, move at angle. And in this case, we're gonna move it one pixel at angle 270. So it's gonna go all the way up uh, until it hits the uh, map and then it's going to collide and then it's going to stop right there at its position and then it's going to set it back to zero waiting to be triggered back into one completing the loop which is pretty cool so let's go back to our game event here and i actually turned off our uh, other enemies just so i can test this out let's hit play and let's see how this looks and always double check your collision boxes as well there you go so it spawned and it flew straight up to the wall, which is what we wanted. And now, actually, now there's two of them because we let both of them. But you can see, let me actually restart this since two of them spawned at the same, spawned one after the other. Um, because we're not spawning it at different positions, you can see that. But you can also see here, there you go. You can see that when we get 100 pixels away, that they go right back. And that's why I like setting it to 100 pixels because it's kind of like Boo from Mario where you know it just kind of does that. Um, I'm noticing here that sometimes it's not setting the orientation of the actual bat. You can see there that it's going left and right uh, once it passes. So there you go. It just has to detect the X position. But we are totally fine doing it just like this. And there we go. We have some really cool bat flight state engine that'll actually be really annoying. So you kind of want to use this sparingly. I definitely wouldn't want to have seven bats uh, chasing me all at once. I don't think any game wants that. So you're going to want to have, you know, one or two occasional bats here and there, and it'll look really, really cool, especially when they all go into their sleep state. So that is how we do our bat AI. We are really getting along, getting through this entire course. We have to now go back and add some interaction. We have FX to add, and then our game engine will be complete. It'll look really, really cool once it's done. We have a bunch of stuff to add for our gun control and for our HUD, and it's gonna look really, really cool when it is all done. Let's actually make sure we undisable these, and to disable quickly, I just hit D on the keyboard, by the way. Uh, so now, if I play this one more time with all of our enemies creating itself at once, that's something else we might have to look at. We might have to look at the enemy we might have to create an enemy manager to do all this stuff so we don't have an overload of enemies attacking us at the same time. But here we go. We have a whole slew of enemies. We've got spiders, bats, and zombies all coming at us. I think I might actually flip that 
that collision so when we collide with that we actually flash and only when we shoot one of these guys it'll flash but we'll handle all the death animations all the collision uh actually we're going to be doing death animations in a really cool way we're going to be leaving the carcasses of all the dead bodies on the actual map here so that'll look really really cool there's a whole lot of other effects coming up so that'll be in the next coming lectures thank you for watching this and i'll see you in the next one